Hi everyone, this is Josie and welcome to my channel. This is Josie's Point of View where we focus on human interest stories throughout the Carolinas. Our story today comes from Raleigh, North Carolina. Take a look at the headline. And it reads, Jury orders three Wake deputies to pay Apex Man $8.3 million for unlawful arrest. I'll provide you with a summary and I'll place a link to a few of the full articles in the description box. So our story today is about these three deputies, Wake County Sheriff deputies, Casey Miller, Ricky Spivey, and Joshua Leland. Last week, they were ordered to pay an Apex man $8.3 million for violating his civil rights during an arrest that took place six years ago. This payment is believed to be the largest excessive for a civil rights verdict in North Carolina's history. I went back and reviewed the court documents on this case, and I found it to be very intriguing. It highlights police brutality and cover-up by law enforcement officers, and this is what we know about this case. The plaintiff in this case is an Apex resident, and his name is Michael Morgan, and he sued the three officers previously shown after he was beaten and shot while driving on his own property in July of 2013. He also spent four months in jail on charges of assaulting a police officer and kidnapping. All these charges were later dismissed, and I'll tell you about them in a few minutes. According to court documents, the plaintiff and another passenger in his truck, and they were working on a job to remove trees and debris for a custom, apparently this is their line of business. And the job involves hauling the debris from the customer site to a disposal site. And this disposal location was on the property owned by Mr. Morgan's, the plaintiff's, father-in-law, and they had used this site repeatedly in order to do their business. On the day in question, which was back in July of 2013, Mr. Morgan and his companion were making several trips to the disposal site from his customer's location when Officer Spidey, who was on the opposite side of the road, spotted the plaintiff. Again, I'll just call him Morgan. He spotted Morgan, and he knew that Morgan did not have a driver's license. So Officer Spivey turned the police car around and came up behind and began following Morgan. In the meantime, Spivey had sent out a call about the pending stop, and that's how the two other officers, Miller and Legan, got involved in this mess. And according to their affidavit, they were driving in excess of 100 miles per hour, forcing our cars out of the road in order to get to the south the stop location. The court document states that the officers went ahead and they searched um, Mr. Morgan's um, truck without his consent. And after they had done that, they went ahead and they issued him a ticket uh, for reckless driving and for not having a, a, a driver's license. And then when he was released, Mr. Morgan was angry. So he drove out into the field again. He was on his relative's property and he began to do donuts and fish deals. And this was all captured on camera. And Mr. Morgan's passenger, who was left now standing by the officers, heard one of them say, we're going to get him now. And that's apparently exactly what they did. Court documents state that Spivey was the first to drive up to where Morgan was out in the field. And using his baton, Spivey struck Morgan in his head twice with the baton. Then using Morgan's shirt, Spivey tried pulling him out of the truck through the window. And because no one was really controlling the steering wheel or the brakes now, the truck started rolling down a hill. And that's when the two other officers drove up. And one officer fired two shots, hitting Morgan in his left leg and in his right hand. And the third deputy pulled out a taser machine and began using it on him. So Mr. Morgan, the plaintiff, was eventually transported to Duke University Hospital for emergency treatment and then to Wake County Jail and Central Prison, where he was incarcerated for up to four months. Mr. Morgan was charged with a number of offenses to include assault on a law enforcement officer, kidnapping of a law enforcement officer, resisting arrest, driving without a license, and some other charges for which he received an indictment from a grand jury 
in October of 2013. And just imagine that these three police officers, they beat up the man, but they lied so much that they were even able to convince a grand jury that they were telling the truth. After an eight-day trial, the jury determined that all deputies did not qualify for immunity from prosecution due to their actions because the jury did not believe their stories. It was stated that the deputies had violated Mr. Morgan's Fourth Amendment rights regarding a legal search when Legan searched his vehicle and that they had violated his rights by the unjustified use of force, unlawful arrest, assault and battery, and false imprisonment. The jury determined that what they, these deputies had done to this man could only be summed up as malicious prosecution. I should mention that all charges against Mr. Morgan were subsequently dismissed. The jury determined that Miller should pay Mr. Morgan $4 million. He's the one that shot him. Spivey should pay him $2.1 million, and Legan should pay him $225,000. In addition, all three deputies must pay Mr. Morgan an additional $2 million for unlawful prosecution for a total of $8.3 million. I have mixed emotion about this case, and there's a certain degree of sadness about it too, because whenever you hear of a grand jury, of a jury really, not a grand jury, a jury making a ruling such as this against police officers, uh, you know that the evidence was just so compelling that they could not have made any other decision. This was the only possible outcome. And even though this may be justice for one individual, you can't help but wonder about the thousands of other cases where justice is never delivered. And it kind of makes you sad because this is not the way it's supposed to be. And these officers are still serving in law enforcement capacity throughout North Carolina even though only one still works with the Wake County Sheriff's Office, it makes you wonder how they can continue to serve the public's interests after a scandal just like this. Um, but it may have been justice delayed by six years for one individual, Mr. Morgan, but at the end of the day, it was definitely not justice denied. And that's all I have for you right now. Please leave me a comment below and let me know what you think about this story. And if you haven't done so already, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel by clicking on that red subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And if you click on this notification bell right here, you'll be the first to know whenever a new video is uploaded. I thank you for watching and I'll be talking to you soon. Bye.